In this tutorial, we'll be teaching you about transfer functions and how to measure them. Why do we need transfer functions? The Hark Robot Audition software uses transfer functions to localize and separate the sounds in the robot's environment. But what is a transfer function? A transfer function is a model of how sound propagates through space. In practice, sound propagates differently depending on the environment. Here's an example. Let's say you speak across the room towards an array of microphones, possibly mounted on a robot. The sound captured from the microphones is not only the sound coming directly from your mouth, but also includes reflections from the ground or walls, for example. The transfer function describes how the environment affects the sound, and this is what we need to measure for use with HARC. Let's look at transfer functions in more depth. Let's assume that the microphone array is part of a linear time invariant system. In other words, we assume that the environment, or microphone configuration, does not change through time. If we call the sound source S, and the recorded sound Y, then the recorded sound Y is defined as a transfer function convolved with the sound source. Now let's simplify this. Let's say that instead of a human talking, we take the most simple sound possible. This is called an impulse, a very loud, short sound, in olden days approximated by a gunshot. Let's call this impulse delta. When we record an impulse, we get what we call an impulse response. Because of the effects of the transfer function, or environment, it would look something like this. In fact, when we play the very basic impulse delta, and record the impulse response, the recording is essentially the pure effect of the environment. In other words, the recorded impulse response actually is the transfer function. What that means is that to get the transfer function, all we need to do is record an impulse. The only problem is that impulses are so loud that most speakers aren't capable of playing them. Enter the time-stretched pulse, or TSP. The idea is, instead of playing an impulse, which contains all frequencies played at the same time, we stretch out the frequencies over time, resulting in what sounds like a downwards chirp. This is called the time-stretched pulse, or TSP, and it's something that speakers can play. The neat part is that convolving a TSP with its inverse gives us our desired impulse delta. This definition is important for understanding later on, so please remember it. Now let's see how to obtain an impulse response from a TSP. The standard method is to play multiple TSPs and record them. Remember, the recording can be considered a convolution of the transfer function and the TSP. So how do we convert these TSP recordings into an impulse response? The simple answer is to use the HARC software HARC Tool 3 which does this conversion process for us. But how does it work? Well, first, it takes the average of the multiple TSPs, then it convolves it with the inverse TSP. And this gives us our impulse response. But why does that work? Well, remember that the TSP recording is the convolution of the transfer function H and the TSP. When we convolve it with the inverse TSP, we obtain the basic impulse delta. The impulse response is exactly the convolution between the transfer function and the impulse. Thus, we get h of t, the impulse response. In other words, we have obtained the transfer function for a microphone array. Now we'll go over how to use HARC to measure the transfer function. You'll need a loudspeaker to play the TSP, a microphone array, for example, on a robot to record it, ear protection because the TSP is still quite loud, and the recording software WIOS, which is part of the HARC software suite, which supports various recording devices such as ELSA or RASP. Any loudspeaker on a stand will work well.
Typically, it's at around the same height as your microphone array. Remember that we're recording the effect of the environment on your microphone array, so make sure it's in the same configuration as when you'll be localizing and separating sounds. Don't place it temporarily on a box, for example. This is the RASP recorder, one kind of recording device that you can use. In general, we play and record the TSP many times, 360 degrees around the microphone array. For every 5 or 10 degrees, you would place a loudspeaker and record the TSP. The first step is to mark the floor to make the placement of the speakers easier. You'll need two people, one to measure the angle and another to mark. In this example, we measure every 15 degrees around the microphone array and mark them. These will be our guide when moving the speaker every 5 degrees. Some masking tape and a felt marker are useful here. Here we're measuring angles using a laser measuring device, but you can do exactly the same thing with a string and a protractor. In the end, you should have measured many points around your microphone array. Now with these two people, assign a PC controller to control the playing and recording of the TSPs, and a second person to move the speaker after each TSP is played. The PC controller will use the software to record the TSPs. Please take note of where it saves the files. Later on, you'll need to tell Hark Tool 3 where to fetch them. So here's what the recording looks like. Once we've finished recording with WIOS, we can use Hark Tool 3 to calculate the transfer function. To do this, first we'll need to generate two files, one that contains the microphone array configuration and one that contains a list of the TSP recordings. Then we'll simply feed these files into transfer function generators for sound separation and localization. First, click on the microphone array location file button. Here we need to tell the software about the microphone array used to record the impulse response. Set the distance of the loudspeaker from the microphone array here. Set the angle of elevation from the microphone array to the speaker here. A rough approximation is okay for most purposes. Finally, set the angle interval between the microphones. For example, in a regularly spaced microphone array with 8 microphones, the interval is 360 divided by 8, or 45 degrees. When you're done, click Generate Template to save the file. Next, let's click the TSP List File button. Now we'll tell the software about the TSP recordings we made. Here, set the angle interval you use during your TSP recording. In this example, we place a speaker every 5 degrees around the microphone array. Next, set the path to the TSP recordings you recorded earlier. Finally, set the number of TSP chirps that were played during each recording. This is typically 8 or 16 and used for the TSP averaging calculation. When you're done, click the Generate template to save the file. Now we can calculate the transfer functions. Click the button for separation. Enter the file paths to the two files you generated earlier and click OK. Do the same thing for localization. And set the file names. When you click OK, you'll be done. You have now measured and calculated transfer functions for sound source localization and separation for use with HARC. Thanks for watching and good luck!